If this war never happened, you might not even exist today. Scientists have uncovered a shocking mystery hidden in our DNA, and it changes everything. 7,000 years ago, something unimaginable happened. A prehistoric war wiped out nearly 95% of all men, leaving only a handful of survivors to pass on their genes. But why? What caused this massive extinction of male lineages? And how does it still affect us today? Let's uncover the dark truth behind this forgotten war. Before you watch the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Human history is filled with mysteries, but few are as intriguing or as controversial as the idea that a prehistoric war once decimated the male population, leaving a lasting mark on our DNA. This theory suggests that around 7,000 years ago, during the Neolithic period, a catastrophic conflict wiped out up to 95% of men, leaving only a handful of male lineages to repopulate the world. Often referred to as the Neolithic Y-chromosome bottleneck, this event has sparked intense debate among scientists, historians, and archaeologists. What caused such violence? How did it end? And what does it reveal about our understanding of human history? The story begins with genetics. In the 1990s, scientists studying the Y chromosome, passed exclusively from father to son, noticed something strange. Modern human males exhibit far less genetic diversity in their Y chromosomes than females do in their mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child. This suggests that, at some point in the past, the male population was drastically reduced, creating a bottleneck in genetic diversity. Researchers estimate that this bottleneck occurred between 5,000 and 7,000 years ago, during the transition from hunter-gatherer societies to agricultural communities. Data from modern populations indicates that while mitochondrial DNA shows a steady and diverse lineage from women, the Y chromosome data looks remarkably narrow. It is as though only a very small number of men managed to pass on their genes, suggesting that many male lineages were simply wiped out. This phenomenon aligns with the rise of large-scale settlements in the beginning of civilization, a time of rapid social and technological change. The collapse in Y chromosome diversity is believed to be connected with intense intergroup competition, potentially involving genocide, enslavement, and the extermination of rival male groups. Archaeological evidence supports the notion of widespread violence during this period. Mass graves and massacre sites have been uncovered across Europe, the Middle East and beyond, dating back to the Neolithic era. These sites contain the remains of dozens or even hundreds of individuals, often showing signs of violent deaths, including blunt force trauma, arrow wounds, or decapitation. One of the most famous examples is the Talheim death pit in Germany, where the remains of 34 individuals were found in a mass grave. The victims, including men, women, and children, were killed with stone axes and arrows suggesting a brutal and coordinated attack. The evidence pointed to a sudden onslaught rather than a disease or natural disaster. Another striking site is the Schönig Kilienstetten grave, also in Germany, where the remains of 26 people, mostly men, were discovered. Many of the skeletons displayed signs of extreme violence, such as crushed skulls and broken limbs. Notably, there were few signs of defensive wounds, suggesting the victims were captured and executed rather than killed in battle. In addition, the Nataruk site near Lake Turkana in Kenya, dating back around 10,000 years, holds the remains of 27 individuals who appear to have been violently slaughtered. This discovery challenges the notion that large-scale warfare only arose with settled societies, implying deep-rooted human tendencies for intergroup violence. These massacre sites paint a grim picture of life during the Neolithic period. They suggest that organized violence was not an anomaly, but a recurring feature of ancient human societies, reflecting competition, domination, and perhaps a ruthless struggle for survival. What started all this violence? The transition from hunter-gatherer societies to agricultural communities marked a turning point in human history. While agriculture allowed for larger populations and more stable food supplies, it also brought new challenges and sources of conflict. Let's dive into the leading theories that might explain this ancient bloodshed. 1. Competition for resources. Agriculture transformed land 
into a valuable resource. Fertile soil, fresh water, and pastures became critical for sustaining growing communities. Disputes over land likely sparked violent confrontations, especially as settlements expanded into neighboring territories. Wealth accumulation may have fostered inequality, driving some groups to raid and conquer others to secure resources. Two, social hierarchies and power struggles. The rise of social hierarchies brought with it the consolidation of power. Ambitious leaders might have mobilized their followers to eliminate rival groups entirely. The emergence of elite warrior classes could have escalated conflicts, with male dominance becoming synonymous with military prowess and political control. 3. Cultural and Technological Changes Technological innovation, such as the development of metal tools and weapons, provided some groups with a military edge. Conquest and subjugation became viable strategies for expansion. Moreover, the domestication of animals and invention of the wheel allowed for quicker mobilization and more destructive warfare. Fourth, climate change. Fluctuating climate conditions, including periods of drought or cooling, might have intensified competition for dwindling resources. Societies struggling to feed their populations could have resorted to warfare, to seize fertile lands or access water sources. Five, patrilineal societies and male dominance. The shift toward patrilineal inheritance emphasized the importance of male heirs. This cultural shift could have fostered intense competition among men for status, resources, and reproductive opportunities. Groups that favored male kinship bonds might have systematically wiped out rival male populations to ensure their lineage dominated. The largest prehistoric massacre. Ever while many massacre sites have been uncovered, one particularly grim example is the Crow Creek Massacre in South Dakota, USA. Although this event took place around 1325 CE, its scale offers a glimpse into the brutality of ancient conflicts. Nearly 500 individuals were found in a mass grave, showing signs of scalping, mutilation, and deliberate killing. Although the Crow Creek incident occurred much later than the Neolithic bottleneck, it demonstrates that pre-modern societies were capable of extreme violence and near-genocidal conflict. It supports the idea that similar events, unrecorded and lost to time, might have shaped genetic lineages thousands of years earlier. How did the violence end? The end of this period of male decimation is as mysterious as its beginning. However, several factors could have contributed to the decline in large-scale conflicts and the eventual stabilization of societies. 1. Stabilization of societies. As agricultural practices improved, populations stabilized, reducing the need for violent competition. The establishment of trade networks facilitated cooperation, allowing societies to benefit mutually rather than fighting for scarce resources. 2. Technological and cultural advances. The development of governance structures, legal codes, and organized religions might have curbed violence by promoting social cohesion. The spread of rituals, spiritual beliefs, and taboos against murder could have acted as a deterrent to intergroup slaughter. Third, population recovery. The surviving male lineages, having established dominance, may have engaged in social structures that discourage infighting. Genetic diversity would eventually increase through trade, migration, and intermarriage, weakening the bottleneck effect. Fourth, cultural shifts. Societies may have developed moral and ethical codes that valorize peace and condemn the wholesale slaughter of rivals. For instance, burial practices showing respect for the dead suggest an emerging sense of community and empathy. Five, environmental changes. As the climate stabilized, agricultural productivity would have increased, reducing the pressure to compete violently for resources. Societies that adapted sustainable farming techniques could afford to coexist peacefully. The legacy of the Neolithic bottleneck. Today, the Y chromosome bottleneck stands as a stark reminder of humanity's turbulent past. Modern men largely trace their Y chromosomes back to a surprisingly narrow set of ancestors from this period. This skewed genetic heritage reveals how completely warfare and social upheaval can reshape the very fabric of human lineage. Interestingly, the dominance of certain Y haplogroups, such as R1b in Western Europe and R1a in Eastern Europe and South Asia, 
correlates with patterns of ancient migration and conflict, suggesting that these male lineages may have belonged to groups that successfully outcompeted and exterminated rivals. Furthermore, the genetic legacy influences cultural perceptions of masculinity, competition, and social structure. It underscores the complex relationship between biology, culture, and survival, and raises challenging questions about the roots of human aggression. The prehistoric war that wiped out 95% of men remains one of the most compelling and unsettling puzzles in human history. This period of immense violence, intertwined with the rise of agriculture and complex societies, demonstrates the destructive potential of human conflict. Yet it also highlights our capacity 